So good morning guys and welcome back to the channel. If you are looking for a middle-aged bearded man to sing to you today, well guess what, you've got the wrong channel. On this channel we are all about cars, automotive content, projects. We do a lot of things here on my used car lot. Today there's a couple of things that we're going to be looking after and one of them is Junior's car. Now I'm not sure if you can hear that or not. He's got a little bit of a clacking noise in this new engine. Quite a while ago, we replaced the engine in this because the old one blew up. Don't know what happened specifically, but cylinder number four took its own life. Put a new motor in it, and shortly after, it developed this little bit of a clacking noise. So today, we're gonna be trying to get that fixed up. I hope you guys stay tuned. So if you'll remember, this engine cost us about two grand. By the time we got a clutch kit in it, another 400 bucks. The starter that was tore apart because the piston let go and took a hole through the block, another 100 bucks. So we've got some money tied up into this project and well, it wasn't meant to be a project, but we got some money tied up into it. We contacted the seller of the engine. They are standing behind it. They told us, do what you have to do to fix the, the noise, and if you can't fix it well, we'll get you another motor. Well, that's the worst case scenario because A, I don't want to put another motor in this thing. It's a big job. I wouldn't want the salvage yard that sold us this motor to have to come good for that kind of money out of one of these cars. I mean, that's a lot of overhead. I'm in business. I understand what it's like to you know, have to do something uh, and look after something. I don't want him to have to do that, but ultimately, at the end of the day, if that's what it takes, then that might be what's gonna happen. So we're gonna get this car in. Tim's gonna tear the front timing cover off of it. We're gonna replace the timing ba uh, the timing chain tensioner because we do believe that's where the noise is. So we'll do that and we'll catch up with you later on and let you know how we made it. But guys, that is not what today's video is all about. Take a look at this. So ladies and gentlemen, what we have here is a 1968 Ford Custom four-door with a 302 V8. These cars are what would later on evolve into the Panther platform that we know today as the Grand Marquis, Crown Victoria, and Lincoln Town Car. So what we're going to do is we are going to take this vehicle for a drive. We're also going to get it in the shop and check it all over because, as I said in the live stream the other night, is this belonged to a friend in the local car club who has passed away and his wife is looking to sell the vehicle. So I offered my services to be able to get it up on some sites that I'm familiar with and be able to provide her with a good solid offer on the car. So that's what it's doing here today and I figured I would take advantage of having it here and get it on camera for you guys. So we're gonna get it through the shop and take a look at it that way, but when we're done, we're gonna come out and we're gonna compare this car to old grandma. Okay guys, it's time that we're gonna take this 1968 Ford Custom for a drive, so let's go. And one thing I wanna point out about this car is just like the modern day Fords, the 
the door. Just barely touch that, that button. Pops right open. So, ignition is way over here on the dash. And it's not fuel injection. <laughs> so I gotta remember. I gotta pump that gas a time or two. Even once it's running, it's hard to hear it. All right, so we're getting ready to take this old 68 Custom for a ride. And the first thing I did notice when I hopped in here was no shoulder belt. I went to go grab for it. Well, it's kind of here. It's hanging up to the side like you might see over here. But it does have a lap belt. We are going to at least fasten the lap belt and uh, give her a little snugging. And we'll go for a drive. The only thing, first thing I noticed right off the bat is there is no power steering in this car. And when I was under the hood, I noticed that there is no power brakes either. So we're gonna roll the window up a little bit, keep some of the noise down, and we'll see what she rides like. Oh, <laughs> no power steering. <laughs> well, it definitely works like a V8. I mean, it's a 302. There's not a whole lot of power in the 302 back in 68, especially uh, on a big car like this, but Nevertheless, uh, it seems to get up pretty good. It does have a slight exhaust leak up front, but you know, not all of these cars are gonna be 100% perfect. The car has sat around for a little bit since, uh, since the old fella passed away, and well, sometimes the longer they sit, they develop little issues. So I'm sure that it's just a small little gasket issue up front, nothing to worry about. But you know, really, for a car that's over 50 years old, uh, it started right up, a little bit cold-blooded, and we're driving down the road, we're keeping up with traffic, we're doing 50 mile an hour, and uh, it's quite a comfortable ride. Now, this bench seat leaves a little bit to be desired. They, uh, they certainly weren't meant for comfort. In fact, when I pulled out of the lot, I thought I was gonna slide out of the door here, but uh, nevertheless, it's uh, cruising right along. We're going to take it up to the highway and spin around and come back through town and uh, see how she works doing maybe 65 or 70. Now, normally when I used to do my reviews on my cars, I would do two things, which was a hard brake or a panic stop and a quick acceleration. Now, this isn't my car and uh, with manual brakes and manual steering, I'm not about to do either of those. So we are just getting ready to uh, turn onto the highway here and those manual brakes need a little more power than what I'm giving it. <laughs> I'll tell you. Now, if you were a teenager driving this car back in the uh, late 70s, uh, you certainly would have got a workout in the shoulders and in the thighs from having to press on this brake. Now, you're, it's been a long time since I've driven a car with um, manual brakes and manual steering. And uh, there's much to be desired, I can tell you that. So we are just getting ready to merge onto the highway and uh, we are all right up to 55. And so far, so good. We're getting a little bit of wind noise around the windows. miles an hour, no shape, a little bit of a wander on the road, but other than that, you can't blame it. 50 years old, I'm almost there. Now one of the things that we're going to do when we get back to the shop is we are going to compare this to old grandma. And not so much option for option, but just compare the size of the car and the offerings of what they had. Now, in 1968, they weren't too concerned, probably about a little bit of wind noise around the, uh, the windows. They weren't too worried about the sway of the steering wheel, the fact that you can move it probably, you know, quarter of a turn a little bit here, and uh, it doesn't even turn. But they probably classified that as uh, good handling. Far from rack and pinion steering, and Vacuum assist brakes. I love this car. I can see myself going on a road trip with this right now. No, I'm not going to buy it. Now, 
Now from inside the car I mentioned about the exhaust leak, you can hardly hear it, it's not that big of a deal. I think this is the type of car that if you were to come and buy the car, you could drive it home no matter how far you were going and wouldn't have to worry about a thing. 32,000 original miles. So here we are, we're now back at the shop and it's time to compare old grandma to the Ford Custom. So in reality, we look at these two cars and coincidentally, they're kind of on along the same color palette here. We've got kind of a creamy color over here and a goldy beige color over here. But when we look at these cars and we see a lot of similarities, four door sedans, they're big boats. And if we actually come up to the front here and we see that I've got them pretty well lined up as far as bumper to bumper goes granted we've got a chrome bumper over there the old chrome horn so they call it and here it's all plastic the metal part is underneath and then as we kind of roll back to the windshield you'll note that the windshield even looks like they are in a similar position now granted both of these cars do have v8s this one 4.6 that one a 5 liter so not much difference in size but when you pop the hood there's a lot of gadgets and emissions and crap underneath the hood of one of these cars versus that one. You've got a couple heater hoses and some plug wires and that's about it. As we come down here and we look at the cars sitting on the ground the same level, you'll note that the Ford Custom is a little bit taller as far as the roof line goes. Now one of the differences that you find on these cars is as big of a car as the Grand Marquis are, there's surprisingly not a whole lot of room in the back seat but if you look at these two you'll notice that the swooping of the back window on the custom goes down whereas on the grand marquee here it kind of bubbles out a bit and then as we move to the very back we get to the bumper again and you'll note that the cars are virtually the same length we're talking you know five decades two cars kind of being away from each other this could be the son of that car. Uh, even the gas tanks are filling on the same spot. As we come around to the back, again, you know, it, we're talking modern cars versus cars from old. Uh, very simple design. You've got your brake lights and your backup lights, kind of all in one unit there. And then of course your big chrome horn across the back. Single exhaust on these cars. Now I don't know what the specs are, but I'm guessing these were a low horsepower car for what they are. It looks like it sits up a little taller. Well, it probably does. We showed you the roof line. Well, you gotta look at those big, you know, 70 series tires. They're only 15s, but they're so narrow and they're so set in the fender. Man, this car is the epitome of a offbeat hot rodding, as Grant Tommy would put it. We could do so much with this car. Anyways guys, there is my look at this 1968 Ford Custom. I really hope that you enjoyed that. We will be getting some pictures up on Instagram for you guys to take a look at. And I hope you enjoyed the comparison between the two vehicles. If you see this car and you are interested in it, get a hold of me because it is for sale. We can go over the details. We can tell you all about what it's going to take to ship it, get it across the border, whatever your interest is in this car, I can help you with the details. I'm doing a favor for these folks and helping them get the word out that this car is for sale. If you're interested, give me a call. My contact information is in the about page on YouTube. Guys, that is going to be it for this episode of Old Car Auto Guy. We will be coming back to you on Thursday evenings live for the Car Guy and Six Fan Show. Not exactly sure whose channel it'll be on for this week, but we will keep you updated. Stay tuned to my Instagram as well as Grant. Tommy. If you haven't seen the Instagram posts yet, guys, you don't follow me on Instagram, go over there and do that now because I made a post about my new Spreadshirt store. I offer three designs. Two are the original OG Old Car Auto Guy. One is the uh, Focus on the Windshield t-shirt, and I've got a new one for the demise of Bubbles. You're not going to want to miss it. I have flashed those up on the screen so you guys can take a look, and you can head on over there today and get your very own. If you order before October the 11th, you will get a 15% discount. Guys, as always, stay focused on the windshield, not the rear view mirror. I love you, God bless. Let's do it again real soon.